to transmit that decision you have to made and you have to uh, uh, design appropriate coding and decoding streams. But we have right now the energy storage. So this is YK is the energy that is coming uh, in slot K and being stored in this uh, in this battery. And there is this encoder. This is the source which has packets to transmit. It always have packets, and this is the those packets or data are being encoded and transmitted on this channel. But what coding scheme I should use at a time? depends on the energy that I have available. So this is so this is the difference between this information theoretic model compared to the usual model. In the usual model uh, you as I said uh, you generally have average power constraint over long time. In this case our constraint will be if E k is the uh, energy available at time k I cannot use uh, for transmission more than what is available. These are hard energy constraints. Okay. So, so this was uh, this required a uh, We are right now assuming a usual AWGN channel that is additive writing white Gaussian noise channel with various sigma square. So this is the most common channel that is uh, studied. And um, in, in at time k, depending on the energy, I am going to use Tk amount of energy and depending upon that uh, xk the encoder chooses some coding and then it does the transmission. What the receiver gets at time k is also has two parts RF circuitry and the actual what you transmit. So, <coughs> so let us say what we are uh, assuming here is that all energy is being used, used for transmission and uh, uh, yk remember is the amount of energy that is being generated in slot k, ey is the average. Then the capacity for the system is half log 1 plus ey by sigma square. Uh, remember this is the noise variance. So this is uh, just the usual capacity of a Gaussian channel where uh, you usually will have P, P is the power, average transmit power that is being replaced by EY here. That is the energy that you are generating in expected energy that you are generating in a slot. So this, uh, this is very analogous to the usual information theoretic results uh, which uh, was, uh, which could be expected. but. Um, uh, yeah, it needed a proper model to to um, to show this. <coughs> now, if you make the change for especially for the base stations, uh, it is not very realistic to assume that all the energy is used in transmission. You do have energy used, a significant amount of energy is used in other things, right? In AC or signal processing or circuitry and so on. So then the equations change. And if I assume ZK is the only spent in processing and computations, and here I'll take ZK to be IID, then uh, the capacity that you get for the system is so this is EY amount of energy that you generate is given there are three different schemes capacity versus EY if you use the kind of scheme that we used uh, earlier then uh, this is the curve you get unless uh, energy generated is more than expected value of what you are using in processing computation you will have no energy for uh, transmission so there will be no capacity for capacity will be 0 if EY is below this value. This is 0.5 is expected ZK. And from then onward, uh, this is how you get the capacity. Now, in this case, in this case, uh, it will be helpful if you let the uh, node sleep, base station sleep. So, if you let the base station sleep with some probability P, because, you know, in this case, what we are assuming is, if you have certain amount of energy, first you are going to do processing, you know, coding, and uh, so the trans transmitter circuitry has to work before you will do the transmission, right? So first you spend the energy in those things, ZK, and then whatever is left, you are going to spend on the uh, actual transmission, the RF transmission, which is which takes place at the end of uh, all these activities. So, if you don't have enough energy, then it is better that you should sleep in certain slots and generate enough, collect, accumulate enough energy so that that can be used for 
processing as well as for transmission okay so if you do in an optimal way you sleep uh, with quality p and this is the optimal p then this is the capacity you get you can get a positive rate even for ey when ey is less than ez okay and this is a curve sitting in between which was obtained by someone else so what we have obtained is a better uh, capacity curve and it uses not only uh, what you the coding that uh, xk that you transmit but also now that you are sleeping this on off pattern can be used for transmitting some data okay so that uh, gives you extra rate that blue curve is showing compared to this black curve if you use this on off also the signaling scheme then uh, you can gain and when ey is small the gain can be quite significant now we modeled a uh, single queue from a queue theoretic point of view there is a data buffer now xk is the amount of data that is coming to the data buffer and qk is the queue length in the data at time k yk is the energy that is being generated in slot k ek is the energy in the buffer energy buffer or battery at time k so again the question is how much power tk power you are going to use in slot k that depends on how much data you have and how much energy you have so what the problem is to get some optimal uh, transmission scheme so that i can get maximum transmission of the data again here what is being assumed is uh, initially that all the energy is being consumed only in transmission okay other uh, sources of um, energy consumption are, have been ignored and uh, xk and yk both sequence are assumed stationary and ergodic then this policy tk it's very uh, in some sense natural policy tk the transmission i am going to do in slot k that is minimum of ek it is the energy available so of course tk cannot exceed ek right i don't have more than this and but i am going to use minimum of this and ey minus some small constant epsilon where epsilon is greater than 0 so what i am going to use is i want to use only average ey energy that is the expected amount of energy uh, in a slot okay uh, but i may not have that much energy available so whatever is uh, i take minimum of what is available and what i would really ideally want to use okay the small constant is just to put here uh, to make sure um, that this policy actually ensures that later on you will always have enough energy okay if you put the small epsilon here we are of course assuming uh, the, the battery uh, storage is infinite in this case so yesterday in prasanna stark you saw some techniques where he has discussed finite buffer and this thing but uh, so this this was the initial we have also done finite buffer results but this is the result uh, for infinite buffer and uh, advantage of infinite buffer of course is you get very explicit closed form expression for the optimal policy this is optimal policy in the sense this this is called throughput optimal policy this maximizes the amount of data you can transmit and still keep the data queue stable so in here is that data queue should not blow up right so i need to use uh, policies here so that this doesn't blow up if you use this policy this is optimal from that point of view uh, it can send in a maximum amount of data without making the queue unstable but it's not delay optimal policy we have also looked at some other policies because delay is also important stability is the first uh, maybe first order requirement that q should not overflow and so on but beyond that you want to go and also make sure that the delays are are not um, uh, very large so there is a this greedy policy we use this is also very uh, intuitive that is use minimum of what is available and this is uh, basically what is available and also look at how much data you have in this policy what happens is if i have enough energy i am going to use this much but what can happen is i may not have at that time time k enough data to be used right so then i will be wasting a little bit asymptotically from stability point of view it makes no difference it's optimal but um, from delay point of view and some sec second order effects uh, that can be 
it, that can make a difference and greedy policy is being used in that sense that minimum of energy and minimum of uh, energy and what I need to transmit the whole data. So this is what I will use. We are calling it greedy policy because it just looks at what is the current data and what is the current energy and be, uh, makes a decision based on that. Now this theorem says when if I use this policy, so remember G is, uh, I should have pointed out, if you are using TK as the energy, GTK is the d amount of data I can transmit, where G is, you know, some non-decreasing concave function. For example, it could be the Shannon log 1 plus SNR function which satisfies these properties. Okay. So if TK is the amount of uh, energy I am going to use, GTK is the amount of data I will be able to transmit. So G is that function. So this theorem says, if I use this greedy policy, then expected value of x less than expected value of gy will ensure that data q is stable. So here we have also assumed that the energy buffer, not, not the data buffer, is finite, which of course is going to be finite in practice. It can be large, but finite. And the next theorem says that this g, if the g is linear, that function is linear, then this po policy is delay as well as throughput optimal. Okay. So, in that sense, uh, you know, this turns out to be good uh, if, if G function is linear because this is uh, in the ideal uh, thing that it is throughput optimal as well as delay optimal. So, some uh, simulation results that we have, we have also studied fading, uh, uh, right now I did not assume fading, we have also studied uh, policies with fading which I am not giving right now uh, because of time constraints. These comparisons are for fading case. This is when g is linear and this is when g is log 1 plus x. There are multiple policies. I have not described all of them because for fading we had a few more policies. So what you see is in this, this is the case uh, when g is log 1 plus x. If you do not have energy buffer, so then what will happen whatever energy in yk I am generating, I can use only that much in that slot and I am not using a battery. Then I can send, this is the curve, this is average Q length and this is uh, uh, the arrival, data arrival rate. This is EX is the data arrival rate. So if I do not have buffer, then Q lens will become large. So this is the stability reason. So this is the penalty you have to pay for not storing the energy compared to these which are different policies with infinite buffer case. And the best policy is you are, this is kind of a water filling policy, WF means water filling. It's a modification of the water filling. This is actual water filling. Um, this modification was done to make sure that you are not wasting uh, unnecessary energy. If you do not have enough data, you use less power. So that gives the best uh, curve here. But as you can see, difference between this and these policies, this is a stability, stability reason. You see, uh, it is about uh, 4.5 and this one is 5.2 or something. So this much gain in stability reason you get if you use this policy. Okay. This uses the buffer, energy buffer as well as makes good use of the uh, channel information and so on. Now if you look at this linear curve, there is a huge difference. Uh, unbuffered is sitting here, greedy and so this is unbuffered. All these others are assuming inferred buffer, but this greedy and uh, this other policy are very close to unbuffered. All the, uh, but this policy, green policy, fading throughput optimal policy is way, way better than the others. And uh, uh, so, so this tells you the advantage of using proper policies. Now, uh, we have combined the Q theory as well as information theory. In this case, you have energy buffer, yk data is uh, energy is coming, ek is the energy available at time k. This is data for a data buffer, AK data is coming and this is the data queue. So this is being coded, so this is encoder. In the last picture we did not put uh, encoder and uh, so this is the information theoretic side. From the encoder, XK is being transmitted 
that depends on also the energy that is available in Tk. This is Gauss 